Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope this video finds you well. In this video I would like to talk about how I approach an oil, pa oil painting, an original one at least, and I divided it into two parts. One is the preparation before I begin to the actual final piece and the second will be the final piece. So I just wanted to discuss about it. The process that I'm going through is not a static one. I probably talked about it in other videos, but there's some general rules that I like to follow. Because it helps me get my idea established to see all the problems that can lie ahead and just get to know better my piece of art that I want to express. And also, if I actually paint and draw something more than once, I can get better idea what I want to convey, what I want to express, what, what I want to, to do here, what is my intention with this piece. So overall, this is my kind of philosophy for this kind of process that I'm going through. Of course, I didn't invent it. It's not mine. I just saw some artists do some stuff that I do here and I decided to embrace some of them, to discard some of them and just, you know, develop my own process for how to, how to do this kind of stuff. So in this first part of the video, it's not actually the first part of the process. The first part, part usually is the thumbnail sketches. Now, I do the thumbnail sketches on a toned paper lately, and I just, you know, create small squares, two inch on two inch, or three inch on, or th on three inch, and I just begin to put shapes, general values, I, I'm not, concerned with detail, I'm not concerned with every, anything. I just want to get to see in my own eyes how the idea looks like on a small scale, black and white, you know, pencils, and I do it on toned paper because I have the whole value range from white to black. And I would, I would also list my materials in the description box down below so you could see what I use here and in the color study. After I finish the first part, which is the thumbnail sketches, I will go on and do what you just saw me do for three minutes. It's the initial sketch. In this initial sketch, I'm going more into the detail mode. I actually try to find all the problems or values that I can sort of fix um, before I approach a color, the color study. After I finish the initial sketch, I go straight into the color study. Now, usually my color studies are less, are, are a lot muted than my actual paintings, and I'm aware of this. I just want to get the main idea established. What's the color relationship? What, what sensation do I want to convey with color and how can I create it? Um, the values in terms of colors, how, how do I interpret it? Uh, creating atmospheric depth. This realistic feeling of, of something real, of, you know, like, like you're looking with your own eyes at it. And so I'm, I'm just looking for this kind of stuff. I'm, I, as you see, I'm working with a flat brush, so I'm not interested so much in details in this kind of part of the process. I just want to put the main colors that I think will exist in each area, and later on I will come with a smaller brush. Now, another crucial thing about this color study is I try to play with temperature differences how cold versus how warm a color is. And it helps, I think, bring the picture 
to life better and creates more interest to the eye and it's just like you know the sophisticated part of the painting where you just each part you create this kind of relationship between other parts with warm cool cool warm and you know just figuring it out now one thing I want to talk about uh, especially today in this video is how to find inspiration like you you walk across the you know the road or the street or you go to nature and you get inspired by the view or by things or by people whatever is your um, inspiration source but one more thing I, I like to do is uh, when I create a file of my reference photos I also insert into it some uh, masters work like masters from this day and age or masters from you know 100 200 years ago maybe you can go further it depends on your knowledge uh, and stuff and I I'm looking for people who done similar things that I can get inspired by and you know try to bring some of this or look at their pieces and, and find how they maybe created some solutions for some problems uh, how you know look at their composition look at their value structure about their shape stru uh, structure and just learn from it and you know bring it into your own piece because for me what what I'm doing here is you know playing playing with color playing with pencils and just trying to um, learn something new understand something new not not to remain static in my own previous knowledge and my own assumptions about how this sh thing should be so I always bring some reference photos also from uh, other painters that I'm inspired by and they sit in my folder and from time to time I'm open I open the the piece and I look at it and I get inspired and I see how they solved out some problems and I see how they dealt with some kind of things and I I, I, I actually can see through their own eyes in some manner and I think it's heavily important that so that beyond the inspiration that you get from the outside world uh, where what you want to express what you want to convey that you will also find your you know an artist that you aspire that you uh, get inspired by I guess and 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 try to see look truly look at their works you know just tr truly look at it and try to get to know it get inspired by it and try to bring this into your own work to look for certain qualities that they manage to provide and how can you try to get those certain qualities in your pieces and so if I can sum up this first part of me just you know <laughs> rumbling around it will be do some little sketches of your initial idea just see if it works like it worked in your mind and then when you found a sketch small sketch that you like go go about and maybe try to do a bigger one more detailed more refined you know to get to know your piece better it will help you tremendously and after that if you finish the initial sketch and you just now what you need to, to do like everything works out in terms of, of value what you need to do is to see how the color harmony works if the main feeling that you want to convey happens and take your time with this part because you know it took me a lot of time to figure out how much time I can waste and while I rush actually because I rushed to get a piece begin uh, like to begin a piece and then to finish it 
but I run into so many troubles and it ends up taking much more time than if I did all these kind of steps that lead me to the final piece. So I will talk about it more. I have a lot more to say about this stuff, uh, but I will talk about it more in part two, which will come up next week. So please stick around to see. So thank you for watching the video. Hope you have a good day, a good week. See you later.